Hi, so we're going to do a basic demo on provisioning on a 3PAR storage system. And what I have here is I've logged into a single array. And this array just so happens to be a, a V400. It's running uh, HP's current code base, uh, 312 MU2. There's no encrypted drives in it. And there are um, a, a mix of disks, uh, fiber channel, uh, in this particular case it's fiber channel, not SAS. Uh, some nearline drives or SATA drives and some SSD. So um, if I want to look at how much uh, real capacity I have in the system, I would go to this capacity tab here. So I'm under the management console. This is version 4.4 by the way. Uh, they, just released, they just released this version, so 4.4. And um, I'm going to select the system that I want to see the capacity on under systems here, right? So I'm going to select the system, and then I'm going to select the capacity. And this tells me what my free capacity is for the fast class drives. Again, in this case, it's um, the fiber channel. So this is what's uh, available to be used. Um, same thing as with the uh, nearline drives. This is what's available. And if I look at uh, the SSD drives, this is what's available. If I just added capacity to the frame, then it would have to initialize, and you would see a number like under uninitialized uh, as it creates the logical segments, or um, as HP refers to them as chunklets. And these would be uh, created, and, and uh, once they're uh, formed, they would be put into the initialized space, and you could use those for provisioning. All right, so this is where you go to actually see the the breakdown of how much real capacity you have in the system and that's important to note because later on when we start talking about CPGs um, some people look at the CPG as a definition of how much space is available but that's not really the case so this is right here is where you would go you could also look at what the entire system has right up here under software I can see all the software licenses that my particular frame has uh, configured uh, again what the uh, current release and code base is Okay, so let's go through some basic uh, provisioning. Now, on a three-par system, there's really just three things you need to do. You need to create a CPG, and a CPG uh, is step one, and it defines two things. It defines the class of disks, whether it is uh, fast class, nearline, or SSD, and then it defines the RAID characteristics um, that, that will be uh, applied to a, a virtual volume once that virtual volume is assigned. Okay, it, I, it might be a little bit easier to explain once I create a CPG. So there's already 34 different CPGs on here, and, and HP actually puts a few CPGs on the system by default for you, but we're going to create new ones. All right, so I'm going to create a CPG. And I'm going to put this one on uh, fast class. And again, what I said before was it's going to take um, uh, on two things. It, it needs the type of drives you want it to put it on, whether it's fast class near line and SSD. And for this particular purpose, we're going to use the fast class disk. And then it defines the RAID characteristics. So I'm going to say RAID 5. It de defaults to 3 plus 1. But as you can see here, it goes all the way up to 8 plus 1. I'm going to leave it at 3 plus 1 just for demonstration purposes. All right. I don't need to check any of this other stuff. I'm not really concerned. Again, this is just a basic demo. All right, so I click Next, and it gives me the summary. It shows the frame that it's going to be connected to, the name of the CPG that I've assigned, and the characteristics of that CPG, fast class RAID 5, 3 plus 1. Click Finish. I'm going to just filter that out so we look at just what I'm creating. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create an, uh, two more, actually. And pardon me, as my screens pop up on a different monitor, i got to drag them over. So... Um, this time I'm going to create it on Nearline. And one thing that's going to happen when I go to Nearline, HP recommends, highly recommends, uh, RAID 6 for uh, uh, Nearline. That's because the drives are slow and, and, they're, and they're rather large. So uh, they're trying to protect uh, data. So if, you're, if they're doing a recovery of a single drive in a system and you, you happen to have another drive failure before the first drive had been replaced, then it gives you just a little bit more availability. So 
I, I don't really think that that's a bad thing. But if you wanted to convert this to RAID 5, then you have to log into the CLI and they can provide you a command to switch that over to enable RAID 5. If I select it, you'll see here RAID 5 when the airline is not supported on this system. You can, you can override that later. All right, so I'm just going to keep the default again for demonstration purposes, RAID 6, um, 6 plus 2. All right, click Next. Again, I get my summary. Click Finish. And within a couple of seconds, you see that pop in. All right, so um, let me go ahead and uh, just work with these two. And uh, the next step I, I, I need to do is create a virtual volume. Now, like I said, there's three steps. First step is create CPGs. We have those. All right, and then as you can see there's no space allocated. All right, so uh, there's no volumes in it. There's no um, uh, disk capacity being being used right now. Disk capacity won't be used until we start writing into volumes uh, or writing volumes into uh, those CPG areas. Okay, so uh, step two would be then to create virtual volumes. So I can go to virtual volumes, create, pardon my screen again, and I'm going to create a virtual volume. All right, and by default it pops up as thin provision, uh, but you can also do a fully provisioned volume. Now, one nice thing about thin provision on three pars is there's no performance overhead. Um, I can say there's no performance overhead. There might be like you know a, a, just a fraction of a difference in performance between two LUNs, um, but in my particular environment, uh, which can be rather heavy, um, I haven't noticed any issues whatsoever with uh, provisioning uh, everything in thin. Uh, I do get a lot of uh, space savings because only the capacity is being utilized is actually being consumed. So that's great. Um, so let's say two terabytes. Just and then I, this user CPG. So user CPG is where my data will be. So I'm going to pick the demo fiber channel uh, CPG. And again, right here is the def the the characteristics of it. Right, RAID five on fast class. All right, because it's thin, I can also enable this allocation warning, and it's going to pop up with 80%. So when that volume gets to 80%, it's going to generate a soft alert so that I I know that that volume's reached 80%. It just reminds me to go back and and verify the uh, that I have enough capacity in the fast class to continue to grow. Um, so you can enable that if you want to. I'm going to skip it. Now here's an interesting part about that is if I want to take a snapshot, a storage level snapshot of this. Uh, virtual volume, I would want copy space and um, the copy space or snapshot space would be in this copy CPG uh, and what's cool is I can put that anywhere so I'm going to put that in the near line, see RAID 6 on near line. So when I take a uh, production level snapshot of, the, this, of this volume that's assigned to this user CPG, that snap space will be exported to this copy CPG space. And what that really essentially does is it makes sure that all my production data is consuming my fiber channel space and all my non-production data, like my snapshots, would um, uh, grow and consume uh, nearline space. I'm only going to create one volume, but this is a cool feature. If you wanted to create uh, multiple volumes all at once, you could do that. And it creates a set name. You could just export the set to your host. It makes it a little bit more convenient. We could do another demo on that later, but I'm just going to create one. All right, and then um, so I'm gonna click next, and we'll see that the summary here says that here's my volume name. It's uh, user CPG is RAID five on fast class. It's also two terabytes in size. Uh, fast class and the snap space will be on this RAID six. Click finish. Now if I go to virtual volumes, I can see that my virtual volume is created. So here's my virtual volumes that's assigned to this CPG. All right. All right. So now that the volume has been created and my IMC is refreshed, I can see that my I have a single volume in here. It's two terabytes in size. We can see that there's just a little bit of admin space. Admin space really just def 
it allows that volume to know it's identifying information, you know, which CPZ, or CPG it needs to refer to, and that kind of thing. But I, I do have uh, you know the two terabytes uh, essentially available, and that's what I was looking for. Okay, so now I've got this virtual volume, and really the last thing I have to do is just export this. I'm right clicking here, and export that. Let me drag my window back over. And I can specify a domain if I had one, but it's just going to be a single virtual volume, which is the one that's selected. I export it to a, an individual host, let's say this host. And then when I select the host, it's going to give me the next LUN ID uh, for that host. You can also select auto, which would just give you an increment, or you can put in what LUN ID you want. Um, so when it exports to it, it makes it a little bit for me. It makes it a little bit easier to find. I know that when I create, you know, ESXi uh, LUN uh, LUN numbers, I might start at 10. If they're database numbers, I might start at, you know, 20. That kind of thing. So when I go to the hosts themselves and scan them, I can kind of, you know, kind of mentally keep that keep track of that for myself. So anyway, so then I just uh, click next here. Uh, it gives me a, a little bit of a summary. Here's the Virtual volume is two terabytes in size. It's exporting to a host, LUN ID 12. Click finish, and I'm done. Now I can pull this down and go to exported LUNs. And I can see that once my window refreshes here, I am doing this uh, from a far distance, so it takes uh, a couple seconds to actually refresh my, my screen. There it is. So it just took me a second for this. You see this little green arrow down here in the lower right. It just keeps going and going and going. Um, so I can see that my exported volume is here. And I can go to host, and here's the host that it's assigned to. And that's it. That's easy provisioning. Create the CPGs, create the volumes, export them to hosts, and you're done.